Blue Origin founder Jeff Bezos has launched a successful first all-female flight crew into space. The crew included civil rights activist Amanda Nguyen, CBS Morning co-host Gail King, the pop singer Katy Perry, film producer Kerry Ann Flynn, NASA rocket scientist Aisha Bao and journalist Lauren Sanchez. For more on this, we're joined by astronomer at large Fred Watson. Fred, from the pictures we've seen, it looks like a pretty amazing experience for this high-powered group of ladies. It was all over pretty quickly, though, wasn't it? They were up and back in no time. Yeah, these are short flights. They're not um, orbital flights. What they do is they get on a rocket uh, and in a capsule on the top of the rocket, they fly up to a speed of round about uh, just under one kilometre per second. The rocket launches them to that speed. And then they're in free fall, so they carry on travelling upwards uh, and the capsule eventually falls back to Earth with a parachute. But you get something like, I would guess, three or four minutes of weightlessness. Uh, that uh, whole flight is over in 10 minutes. Um, and from what we know about the cost of these things, that mounts to 500 US dollars per second per person. So it's quite an expensive business still. It certainly is. How do non-astronauts prepare to go to space, Fred? I mean, can you just rock up and, and take off or do you need to actually train for that experience? Yes, there is training, but it's not anywhere near as rigorous as the training that orbital astronauts have to go through because you're uh, you're weightless for a very short length of time. The training would include all kinds of, you know, emergency situations that might arise. So far, there hasn't been one on one of the Blue Origin uh, rockets, one of the Blue Origin tourist uh, flights, of which I think this is number 11. Uh, so Jeff Bezos's company uh, is actually... Um, really building up quite a track record of successful flights of this kind. Uh, typically six passengers on each one, uh, and uh, that few minutes of weightlessness and a view of the curvature of the Earth, which is what you get from 100 kilometres where uh, they top out. Uh, that is the official borderline of space, what's called the Kármán line. You mentioned the exorbitant cost involved in this. How long do you think, Fred, until this sort of thing is, is more widely available, that you know, people can, can put heading up for a quick trip to space on their to-do list? Um, I think it's still going to be a while. In many ways, we're looking at an era that's similar to the early days of flight, uh, when flying was very much the province of the, of the wealthy. Uh, that's certainly true of space tourism. Uh, as, uh, you know, as the situation uh, progresses, we get more facilities. Uh, Virgin Galactic, which is perhaps uh, the uh, Blue Origin's uh, biggest competitor, uh, Virgin Galactic are looking at more than one flight per week, which will inevitably bring the cost down. Their flights are similarly priced per ticket, something like 400 thousand dollars US per ticket. So that uh, that it's just by moving into a much bigger market that you will bring the part price down. I think we're quite some years from that yet. Oh, I'd love to see it one day, hopefully in my lifetime, Fred. Um, tell us a bit more about Blue Origin. We've heard, you mentioned Virgin Galactic. We know what Richard Branson's been doing this space, Elon Musk's SpaceX. We we hear a lot about that as well. What's what's the what's Blue Origin up to? How do they compare? So, yes, Jeff Bezos uh, founded Blue Origin in around about 2000. He uh, was already a, a tech billionaire. Um, and uh, his company is really interesting in the sense that um, it's got several arms to it. It's not just space tourism. The New Shepard series of rockets, which is what they're flying for these tourists, is just part of the business. But they have also developed some very efficient rocket motors. Uh, they can put spacecraft into orbit and they do have contracts with NASA to build uh, hardware for the Artemis missions. These are the missions that will take astronauts to the moon, probably from about 27, 2027 onwards. So it's a major concern and a really quite important player in the whole space industry. Yeah, fascinating to watch uh, how it all progresses. Fred Watson, really appreciate you joining us as always. Thank you. Many thanks, Ash. Thank you.